Hey everyone. So earlier the cat was snoring on the heater, but I hope I've convinced her to join us instead. It's really been getting a bit cold here in Vienna and she loves to seek out the warm places. I hope this one here will do as well. So, today I'd love to have a look at one of these super old books in my collection. I had one of them in the video on the Slavic languages, which was a while ago. This is Meyer's Konversationslexikon, and there are 16 parts to it. So plenty of information that we can look through. I really love the back of the book, it's just gorgeous, with that gold detail. The pages are quite yellow, but that's all right. It's, after all, from 1875 and it's an Encyclopédie des Allgemeinen Wissens so an encyclopedia of common knowledge and there's some geographical maps in there I haven't used it as a source to look up things, frankly, because I'm not good at reading these old scripts. But one thing I noticed that I thought was quite interesting, when there are See if we can find an example. When terms from another language are adopted, like here, they are written in one of our common fonts. Like here, ellipsocephalos. Not sure what that is. But on another part here, the very first entry is on electricity. Well, not the very first, but one of the first. And just look at how much information there is. It gives you a nice idea of that point in time and what people were interested in and where developments were made. Okay, it was too cold here for the cat. Here are some electric devices, like clocks. But I want to skip a bit further. We have a map of Alsace. And what's pretty typical is that a lot of terms are translated into German. If you look at a map today, or at least a German map, you will often find the uh, local names for towns, etc. But back then it was more common to translate them into German. 
and of course with Alsace and Lorraine there's a good reason for that so we have here Nieder Elsass, the lower regions and Ober Elsass, the upper regions with see Mühlhausen, Tam, there's Colmar Markirch. This one already has a French name underneath. Samariomi. Stambach. Molsheim. Strasbourg. Hagenau. Buchsweiler Hall. Mm, can't quite read. I think it's a B. Bouvi. Hagemund, Vorbach, there's Metz, Nancy, with the German name in brackets, Nancy, and there's a Salzburg, I didn't know that, Chateau, Salius, Salius, here we have the Man Rhein Canal, and then here Le Rouge, or in German Vogesen, so the mountains in that area, which aren't too high but really lovely for a hike. I went a couple of years ago and really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful area. See what else we find. Different kinds of ducks with the German name and the Latin one. So we have a Brandente, Stockente, Fuchsente. Witwen Ente, so a cat hair, the Eider Ente and the Braut Ente. But I guess only with the males, and the females would probably look a bit different. all kinds of information, not just technical or geographical, but also on botanical points of interest. Okay, cat might be coming back, we'll see. Here we have a map of the earth. In Mercator projection, the Eastern Hemisphere, and the Western Hemisphere. You can see it's not quite ideal when Greenland is bigger, almost, than South America. It's one of the downsides of using this particular projection. You can see the mountain ranges here running north to south across the two continents. And we have the naval connections between Europe and North America and South America, particularly the Brazilian coast. So, so some here to the Caribbean. It says the sea, post and colonial besitz. 
so I guess this was um, postal routes and it also tells you die mittlere Fahrzeit in Tagen, so how long it took on average, how many days and the points behind the numbers mean whether it was monthly, every two weeks or every week let's see if we can find an example I guess this one here, 14 with two dots 22 with three dots mm -hmm. 10 with two dots 18, another two dots 14, two dots So I guess generally every two weeks And we also have some of that information here across the Indian Ocean to Australia, for example this is here, it took 14 days and the connection was once a month a lot of the ships leaving here, England mainly maybe the French coast to Cairo as well north to Greece again we have the mountains, the Alps Caucasus Himalaya and many different Streams of Siberia in the north. This, of course, is easy to see when everything's a bit larger, whereas India is quite tiny here. differentiated any further and neither is Italian Oh, someone's happy right now and Then here we also have Romania and you can see the little pink dots here with some German populations that moved along the Danube We have Basque, which is an isolated language, so not related to any other language in the world and the Celtic languages Gaelic, Welsh, Breton Green are the Slavic languages stretching out here across Eastern Europe from the Balkan with Bulgarian 
Serbian, Croatian, Slovenian to Czech. Here we have Ruthenian, which we've mentioned before, a word that was quite common in older German texts. Usually means Ukrainian. I don't know if that's necessarily what it refers to here. Ukraine would be Klein Russland, small Russia. And there, here we have Belarus. And here's Great Russia to the east. We have here says Ural Altai Shafarka, so it postulates the Altai theory that the Finno Ugric languages were related to Turkish even here. We know that that's not the case. We have Hungarian, Finnish, the Sami languages here in the north, and the Finno Ugric languages here in the north of Russia. Turkish would be here. And in light orange we have Tatar Shafarka. So I think basically this would run on the Turkic today as well. If he a Turkmen uh, Kyrgyz language, etc. Then the Caucasus kind of stands out a bit with its huge amount of languages. Maybe we can have a look at that sometime as well. Okay, one second, Kitty. see what it looks inside with the tree-like structure. And here, even more details. <laughs> I really like this one here. spirals as it unfolds. Again with the German and Latin designations. I don't know what this is, but it's called das alte Weib, the old woman. Weib is a very outdated word. If you're learning German, don't use it. We have here Karpfen, Wels, Lachs, Hecht and Hering. So if you were someone who liked to go fishing, the 
this would be quite useful to identify the different kinds of fish. I don't know if you'd be fishing for tuna though. Tunfish. There's a stir. Flussbarsch. Fliegender fish, so the ones that jump. Steinbutt and Seeteufel. That's pretty neat, don't you think? And some information if you want to have your own fish. It's a salmon right after its birth at three weeks old. And here we have a different fish at three months old. I'm actually really bad with the English names for different kinds of fish. I don't eat it, so I feel like I don't need it. And here we have some astronomy. The constellations of the northern sky. So in German, the constellations have names in German, so they've been translated. In English, they're usually in Latin. which can have its advantages. It might be a bit more difficult to learn, but you'll probably also be able to understand them in other languages. So here we have the lion. Here's a unicorn. That one's quite difficult to see. There's the uh, small dog, Canis Minor, and here would be Sirius, Canis Major. Let's just turn this over. This is the brightest star in the northern sky, and if you live in the northern hemisphere, it's a great time to see the star right now. So it comes up in the east. And even if you don't know any constellations, you'd probably be able to identify Orion with its famous belt of three stars. And he holds a shield up like this towards Taurus and German called Stier, the bull. Here's its eye, Aldebaran, and its two horns. And there's a beautiful little tiny constellation right here that you can see, seven stars. And there's a Beautiful small constellation right behind the Taurus. Pleiaden, sieben Gestirn. Seven little stars close together. You just have to be able to find Orion and then look in the right direction. You'll notice it. These are the stars of winter. And there on the other side you would have the stars of summer. Swarm. Um, which ones? The Lyra. 
And you can see this is the Milky Way that runs through. So in summer is a great time to look out at the Milky Way. Winter you don't see as many stars. But it can be great to actually identify different constellations. We have some flags. Including the US, Mexico, Brazil. I don't know if these are specific flags. Obviously they look a bit different. At least some of them. So it's a local flag for Hamburg, Bremen, Lübeck, Oldenburg and Mecklenburg. Maybe there for ships. I says here, Handelsflagge H and Kriegsflagge K. So for merchant ships and for warships. Here's the one for Austria and Austria-Hungary. Not that Austria had a lot of uh, ships, at least not successful warships. Some geological formations of North America. Edinburgh and a region in Germany. And we're getting to the end. Some information on the Franciscan Brotherhood. Franck Archer, Franck Tireur, Franck Frankenberg and Frankenhausen, Frankfurt am Main, Frankfurt an der Ruder, the cities in Germany. Some information on Benjamin Franklin. Quite a lot of information on Benjamin Franklin, actually. And then we end with Francomanie, which you'd have to look up in the next book on the Galomani. Not a word that I think is still in use. Galomani. I hope you're enjoying your pre-Christmas days and I wish you beautiful holidays and I'll see you again after the holidays. Until then, good night. <laughs>